Praise the Lord, y'all. Welcome back to Christ First Homemaking. My name is Sister Shanice, if you are new here. I am so excited for you guys to be here with me today. Today we are going to be talking about a very near and dear topic for me. Um, it's something that I actually taught on in Bible study, and so I'm bringing it to you all so that we can all be women of God that are out for the Lord's heart. And so I am thankful that you guys are here. If you are new here, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are not new here, welcome back. I'm so glad that you guys have been making your way back to my channel. On this channel, you will fi find um, from scratch cooking. You will find recipes, encouragement, and motivation in your homemaking. And most importantly, the word of God. And just my everyday life as a single mother who is a homemaker. And so I do encourage you that if you have not subscribed to my channel, to go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when I do upload another video. Now, anything that's in this video will be linked down below. However, the brown sugar is not technically a recipe. Um, I will link the video for that because I did share that in a previous video. Today we are going to be talking about some structures that I have been learning about in Bible study as well as in church service that I can add into my day to day to keep me um, on track and just things that can keep me reminded as I'm drawing closer to the Lord. And so one of the topics that I actually taught on for Bible study was irritation structure. And so my pastor introduced this topic of different structures called the seven structures, excuse me, of importance. And so these seven structures are things that we all deal with in our day to day that we continue to deal with. And so we, as people of God, need to be able to overcome. And in order for us to overcome, we've got to put a biblical response to the things that we go through. So the world will give you a pill and a name for everything, right? And so that's fine. However, as us having our hope and looking to the Lord Jesus Christ for our healing and all of our substance, we know that even though there may be a name and a pill for everything, there is also a biblical response. And so we've got to go back to scripture and determine, okay, Lord, this is what's going on. How do I deal with this? What do I need to do so that I can overcome and be as your word, as your word says, to walk in holiness without spot or blemish. So one of the structures that I um, specifically taught on was irritation structure. And so that um, topic was um, obviously it was directed toward women because we do have women, um, men in our church as well. But this topic was specifically for the women. I am not a pastor. Um, I am not uh, a preacher or anything like that. But I do. Um, when, if God has called me to do something, then it is my job as the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ to answer that call and to do what I need to do to be able to be obedient. And so I was called to teach on this specific topic. And so the irritation structure was the one that I did. And it was a great um, learning curve for me as well because it took a lot of studying. But it was also eye opening because it was somewhere that I spent a lot of time in my past. And not to say I don't get irritated now, but there was a time when that was my word, y'all. Like everything was irritating to me. It didn't matter what it was. But see, irritation comes from somewhere. It's not just an emotion that we walk in and then it's just, you know, it just popped up out of nowhere. That's not how it happens. And so I'm gonna start by giving you the definition of irritation structure. And the definition is a pattern of emotion. One shows when things don't go their way or circumstances are out of their control. Characterized by feelings of impatience, anger, or annoyance. So what does that mean? It means that some of us have been living our lives as the irritated woman. The book of Proverbs gives it a specific name. And that's when we're going back to what I said before about a pill and a name for everything. The Bible calls it a contentious woman. The woman that have you on the housetop. Okay. 
That's what the Bible calls it. Are you a contentious woman? Have you spent your days being so overwhelmed and so angry and so burnt out and worn out that you've let your emotions become your life and your reality and so everyone around you feels that and now guess what not only are you irritated but your family is as well These are important questions to ask ourselves because as us being women of God, especially homemakers, our job is not to be the irritated woman. Our job is to, to nurture and to cultivate love and, and respect in conversation and the spirit of God in our homes. But if we are living our lives as the irritated woman, none of those things are going to happen. So you're like, okay, well, what does the irritated woman look like? I will tell you. The irritated woman is always fussing. Doesn't want to be told anything. She's got it all together. Don't tell her anything. She's got it. She's short-tempered or has a bad attitude. Always complaining. There's nothing ever that's going good. Always complaining. Very unkind in behavior and speech. Oh, y'all, I was there. Okay? And that was one thing I had talked to one of my sisters about is that being unkind I don't want to be unkind. I don't want to be that that mother when, you know, you say things and you're like, okay, well, it's out there. You can't take it back now. But we remember those things as, as children and we grow up and guess what? It sticks with us. Do I want that for my children? No, I don't. But was I there? Yes, I was. Prideful and relying on self and not God. That we can do all things in our own strength and we don't need the Lord. See, when we have become our own idol, when we have sat on the throne of our own heart, we have told God, I don't need you. That I can do all that I have done absent of you. And that's not the truth. The truth is, without Christ, we would be lost. We would be, we are nothing without Jesus. And so when we have spoken these things, and maybe we have not maybe spoken them with words, but our actions show that, you know what, Lord, I got this all on my own. But where does that get us? It gets us the irritated woman, the contentious woman, the woman who does not seek the Lord for her help, the woman that does not even rely on the Lord's strength, she leans to her own understanding and all of her ways are right in her eyes. But that is not the Lord's will for our life. We are, again, representations of Jesus. And I've said that many times on this channel. So we are representations of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we behave in ways contrary to the word of God, we make Jesus and the church look bad. We look just like the world. How do you expect to win souls when we are walking in our flesh all day? We can't speak the spiritual things because we have not put them on. We have let the issues of life rule our character. When we adorn ourselves with the word of God, we leave no space for irritation. Because we have trusted the Lord for our substance. We have trusted the Lord for our help. We do not lean to our own understanding. And when emotions arise that are contrary to sound doctrine, guess what? We can lean to the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. So what does it look like? How do we overcome? What does it look like to put on the word of God? The first step to putting on the word of God is knowing the word of God. You cannot put on or walk in something you do not know. Just like we get dressed, how are we going to put on a shirt if we don't even know what a shirt is? Reading our word and spending time with Jesus is how we learn the spiritual things we need to put on. The second thing we need to be doing is praying and putting our armor on daily. 
we are in a continual fight for our souls y'all this is the last days okay jesus is on his way back and the devil is out here and he is taking souls and he is playing for keeps okay and he is doing a very good job at it but y'all we don't know when the lord jesus is coming back we just know that he is and when he comes we want to be ready Now is the time to get our lives right with the Lord, to purge and clean up what we have allowed to be messed up. How unwise are we not to use the tools God created for us for our protection? When we are not praying or do not have our armor on, we leave ourselves exposed and vulnerable to the devil. Then all those fiery darts begin to come and find yourself wondering why you are having negative thoughts and feelings. Everything is irritating. Nothing is peaceful. It's only chaos. You start saying things you have no business saying, speaking doubts and evil upon yourself and others. When you continue to walk in irritation, it becomes you and it's hard to shake. We tell ourselves nothing even happened. I don't know why I feel like this, but something did happen. We gave space to the enemy and all that junk has gotten into our spirit. And lastly, when we put on the word of God, we find that nothing going on around us affects us. We are ready to speak life to ourselves and others. The word of God becomes our first defense to combat those negative emotions. We stand on the word of God and speak it over ourselves. You begin binding and loosing the negative behavior because you know that it's not the character of Christ. It starts with us, what we choose to do from here. If you don't have a prayer life, I encourage you today to start somewhere, spending time in prayer. And I'm not just talking about, Lord, touch this day, touch me, keep me, and amen. No. Those prayers where you got to dig deep for the root of your issues. I hope this video encouraged you just to take a look at your own behavior. Have you been a true representation of Christ inside your home and outside of our homes? Because, see, when we are walking as an irritated woman, our homes do not function. They are off balance. And it's going to show up in everything that we do. So now is the time to get our houses in order, our spiritual house, as well as our physical homes. So that when the Lord comes back, our whole households can go home to be with the Lord. I thank y'all so much for being here today. I do encourage you, if you've made it this far, to do subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when I do upload another video. All links will be posted down below. I am so glad that you guys are here. My name is Sister Shanice. This is Christ for His Homemaking, and I am signing off. Peace.